Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Today, I'm once again answering some of your questions such as what do I think of the new Tag Heuer Formula One collaboration release with Kith and what is the best time of year to get a great deal on a watch? All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today, I'm wearing my H. Moser Pioneer. Um, this is the green dial on an orange Moser strap. It's getting hot in Miami. I absolutely love this. My favorite high horology sports watch. And also guys, the grand update on Delray watch is still going. Three highlights I want to show you are a Longue, Grand Longue one in platinum. This one's in fantastic condition. One of the coolest watches ever made. And of course, the cheapest one ever out there this one is a real steal we also have an h moser pioneer we actually have three of them we have the blue with pvd the red fumé dial and the blue lagoon dial all exceptional pieces i own one myself box papers and the least expensive ones out there and for the ultimate dress watch we got a jlc grand reverso my favorite size of the reverso this is the beautiful time on one side and exhibition case back on the other can't go wrong with this art deco icon all that and way more at delraywatch.com the best place for a watch geek to buy a watch link in the description below Anyway, guys, you know how it goes by now. These are the questions you ask me on Instagram at Federico Talks Watches. A few times a month, the Q&A picture pops up. When it does pop up, you can ask your questions below. When I get enough questions, I take the picture down. Please do not DM me. I do not check them. And we start with a regular T-Man making moves. And he says, hey, brother, are watches by Vempe or Torno worth buying? Well, I think it depends here. They're in different categories. I actually work for both Vempe and Torno. The older Torno watches made by Walden International are definitely worth buying. Beautiful dial and cases, some interesting movements, including Valju 7750s, but even some El Primeros. Those were very high-end pieces. Unfortunately, Oscar Walden passed away a few years ago, and I have no experience with the new Torno, uh, Torno line of watches. The Vempe watches are also absolutely fantastic, even to this day, particularly the Chronomotoverke line, which I totally butchered the name, with in-house German-made movements. They also have some Eta slash Salida movement pieces with interesting complications such as triple calendars and um, world timers. They are assembled and made in their observatory factory in Glasuta, Germany. Vempe is a brand I can stand behind, not only a retailer, but a top-notch watchmaker. Kevin Jew 95 said, Hey Fed, at the same price, would you go for the Ed White Omega or the Silver Snoopy Award? This one's super easy for me. I'd go with the Ed White. It has that gorgeous column wheel caliber, absolutely stunning, some real high horology there. It's very rare and less common than the Silver Snoopy. And the Silver Snoopy, while a cool watch, is still kind of gimmicky. They've made so many Snoopy versions um, that I think they're kind of losing their edge, which is, which, you know, unlike the Ed White, has true mechanical uh, value. Uh, at least, even not to say the Silver Snoopy doesn't, but it's more of a standard movement, whereas the Ed White, the movement is truly special. That's what I would go with. The Wrist Index. What are your thoughts on the new tag for Kith Formula One? Um, yeah, total piece of crap. I mean, we got $1,500 quartz plastic watches. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually think the old Formula Ones are super cool. They're like a time capsule. When you can buy them on eBay for five, six, seven hundred bucks, you know, even that's overpriced, but I get the nostalgia, I get the cool factor. But at 1500 bucks, it makes no sense. Now, they all did this because I think the Kith founder, who's a watch collector in his own right, used to collect Formula One. So they both saw dollar signs and collaborated and made this entirely overpriced piece of retro shit. Um, and, and, and yeah, I mean, listen, I also don't get it. I'm a full disclosure. 
I'm not a streetwear guy, if you couldn't guess. I hate all the streetwear collaborations. I'm not into the streetwear culture. I'm more of a classically styled gentleman. But in terms of just what you get for your money, it totally absurd. Uh, it belongs in a flaming pile of garbage. Vintage Loom. Hey, Fed, love the channel. Thank you. What's the best sub 2K GMT out there? You have a lot of options, but if you want to go off the beaten path, I would go with the Eterna Contiki World Timer. I actually used to own this watch. Uh, it's an ETA 2892 based GMT with a very solid bracelet, uh, GMT function, world time bezel. But yes, a brand that doesn't get much love anymore, but this one is still very hard to find and the prices are going up. Uh, but I do think you can still kind of find it around 2K. And then one pickled ginger says, is there a better time of year to get a deal on a watch? Well, there's no specific time of year to get a deal. There is a time of year to avoid, and that is November and December. Uh, sales are super hot then, prices, uh, go up because of the holidays and they usually settle back to normality around February. So while February to October is pretty stable, like no particular time where they go down, it is best to avoid November and December uh, for obvious reasons, prices tend to be a tad more expensive. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. And of course, I will catch you in the next one. Take care.